almost implemented the thing so uh, let me show you how everything looks these are the things you need to do to scale the project actually if you don't know i'm just gonna open source all of it so you can just fork it and use it in your projects too hey there i'm soumya welcome back to the channel so uh today i will be doing some things um okay not some things but um so i've worked on a, on the mongodb server and uh it's like i'll show you all these things probably in the next video i'll show you uh, a working like um, you know demo of the server so that you know you can just fork it and use it on your own projects but yeah you can just authenticate it gives you uh, you know access token refresh token and all those cool stuff um, so today what i'll be doing is that trying to learn the flow of uh, you know uh, the access token and refresh token how to integrate it with next js and the also another thing is that i will be using cookies not local storage because it's next js and also cookies are much better than uh, local storage right you can just the access token can just go off expire and all these things could happen i don't know how to do all these things but uh, today uh, try to figure out the flow of uh, or uh, the expiry of token and what's going to happen when when what's going to happen all these things which seems very crazy and convoluted now so if you're wondering like on what i'm integrating authentication so it's uh, another next chase template or starter that i'm also working on that you know you can all that i'll be also uh, sharing the link actually i had shared the link in the previous video in the description and also i'll be giving it here uh, you can just uh, you know fork these things and once all of this is complete the mongodb server template is there this next chase template is there I'll, I'll be just you know show showing you a demo of how you can use these things after forking so that it will be pretty easy to you know just the friction it will take out the friction from idea to execution that's why i'm doing this right just making a template of repetitive stuff right so yesterday i just uh, sat down and made this uh, ui um, yeah uh, so what happens is i just you know it has a home page and i just added uh, a sign up button sign up here all this ui that you're seeing is from um, chakra ui which is pretty good i just recently found out and uh, you know saw its features and uh, read the docs and found it's pretty simple and cool to use uh, so and i also have done user validation and i'm using yup uh, for validating things so for example if i just write something it says invalid email and if i write a good email it just goes the errors go away and um, all these things are happening and this is due to yup which is our schema validation thing uh, it uh, you show you tell it that hey this is this is the things we need and uh, it integrates with formic uh, which is the which is how i made this form formic is a package which just helps you make forms uh, super easy and add validations to them you know it's pretty cool so if i just show you the code you know probably if you are curious you can just watch it this is the code for this form right um, so this is all it took to you know get this form with all all the features you see all validation and all this stuff uh, so this is the schema um, this is the yup thing I was talking about you s give it some things parameters to be checked and it throws error according to that and we just close this and yeah this is the input and just I made a, a custom input component so that you know you sh see the errors for example here the errors the labels and all these things um, you know uh, i've learned this working at place um, working at places that you, you these are the things you need to do to scale the project so it will help us in future but take some time in present but it will be good for future right um so yeah this is all it took to you by using formic to make this form that you see now right um so now you can actually sign up and sign in right and i'll be showing you all, all this it has also this end progress thing going on that's pretty cool and I also added night mode well people want night mode right we love night mode as you see there's a lot of things happening here because of night mode um i have to figure these things out okay i'll just start working and let's see if i'm able to figure out things or not um yeah Okay, so this is 17th the next day morning and I uh, yesterday did a bunch of stuff I understood a lot of stuff and uh, almost implemented the thing so uh, let me show you how uh, everything looks this is the server I'm actually using uh, this studio studio 3t free uh, for the first time and uh, it's pretty cool actually i did not i did not know you can use uh you know you have a gui interface for mongodb uh 
I just I just connected to MongoDB Atlas earlier and just you know uh, on the I, I did stuff on the real server which is live which was live uh, which was very dumb of me but yeah now I know I'll run the next the app side of it okay so this is how it looks now okay uh, so if you just uh, haven't signed up or sign, uh, signed in uh, you're gonna come here it's a Actually, if you don't know, I'm just gonna open source all of it. So next days, uh, you can just fork it and use it in your projects too, uh, with authentication, all of it implemented with access tokens and refresh tokens. Um, so, uh, okay, cool. So let me just open the dev tools out here. Uh, if you're curious, uh, so in Redux, uh, I have two things. One is the this is the RTK query, uh, RTK query auth API used to do auth stuff using RTK query and this is the auth slice which remembers what it gets right uh, so we can check that out too uh, so it's the application and in the application i am in the cookies section uh, feels good to jump from local storage to cookies now um, so okay so now it's nothing it's just something default next year has or chocolate you i don't know something or someone has it so this is nothing you can just remove it too okay so we have the landing page someone comes to your project but now he wants to sign up so well you can sign up here so you see the sign up right uh, let's start from the beginning come to the landing page you try to sign up the user so uh, uh, now when I sign up uh, I can open the application here and boom sign up welcome this cool thing comes in and you have the uh, access token and the refresh token uh, in the cookies um, and they both have expiry time which you can set so you'll see after some seconds uh, I've set it to a minute this access token will actually be removed uh, automatically it will just go away that means that the user can't now make requests uh, so if I just refresh it now it will be gone uh, automatically it goes away I've set it one minute so it will just go away, go away after one minute and the point of having, having a refresh token if you don't know uh, is that uh, this refresh token is used to get another access token and without access token you can't make any request and go get any resource from the server access token is the thing that's uh, that just says the server that hey this is a uh, this is our user uh, so point of removing access token and there are apps that you, you don't even have refresh token and when I when I made my first full stack application I, I used just access token which is great uh, which is fine but having a refresh token is just more secret because uh, access token can be used by anyone uh, you know to just use uh, abuse API or from what I've read but with the refresh token you can use this refresh token to get another access token and the previous one access token if someone had tried to use it that will be invalidated and the use uh, the, uh, the server will just reject it and will not give it give him any resource so with refresh token you get new access token after some time uh, which just ensures that ensure more security for the app a welcome to home authenticated user oh God, okay this actually gives current okay so refresh token is gone right um so yeah, we don't have anything, uh, uh, access token or anything. Now, if I, now I can just uh, you know uh, do profile and so for example, if I just reload it now, um, I will get I should get another access token. There you go. That happened because the user still has the refresh token and he is eligible to get another access token, and that's why he's just uh, he got another access token, which will again go after some a minute and yeah that's that's the point of it that's that and you can just go to profile and log out um and that's it and you can also exactly like that uh, sign in and that will happen and another cool thing i also uh, used here is uh, this so i just go to api just so this is a uh, axios interceptor which i learned about recently so what happens is that from the moment that api request gets fired it goes through an interceptor which intercepts every request that goes out of your app and you have the access token available in your cookies uh, it will just insert it and let that request go to the server right so that's pretty cool and another cool thing is that uh, if you do not have the access token for example i'm using the app right i'm using the app and uh, that that one minute has just passed and i haven't refreshed the uh, the my app so i will not get an access token but the user is scrolling something and he needs to make a api request well how is he going to get the thing 
all right so when this thing does not work out you will not have the access token and this will thing will throw error and only the, the simple api without the access token will go to the server the server will respond with error and there and in this interceptor this is the request insert uh, interceptor so when you get a so when you make a request this piece of code runs after you make a request and when uh, when a response comes from the server this piece of code runs interceptors dot response to use right and and when this response uh, has an error to, uh, that hey uh, you don't have the access token what happens is that automatically uh, this piece of code calls this api which uh, refreshes uh, which gives me another access token so actually i still have uh, I, I still haven't test tested it uh, but uh, i have tested this this actually works but i haven't used the response thing the use case that i just said said to you but yeah uh, it, it should work that way yeah so this is what i've done till now i uh, learned a lot about uh, these these cookies and uh, how to set them get them and uh, the the flow of authentication with uh, these two tokens which is pretty cool and yeah uh, everything all of this will be uh, up on github and actually it is up on github we'll be leaving the links in the description and yeah you can just go and check them out and this template is almost set up uh, when everything is done i'll make a just a video on explaining how the the servers server template works how the uh, app template works uh, so that anyone who just tried to use tries to use this repo can just see the video and know hey this is where everything is happening from okay so that's about this video and i'll just uh, start working on the project i was talking about in my previous video and uh, yeah let's see what happens if you're watching till now thanks a lot for that uh, you can just write down a comment uh, it would be pretty great to know you and yeah i'll see you in the next one till then keep building